aromatic adventure. Welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson. And I'm here today to evaluate this candle, Unicorn Poop. I've already evaluated this candle before. I'll get back to that name, Unicorn Poop, because that it, it does demand a little bit of an explanation, but I'll get back to it. I initially evaluated this candle on one of my live streams, and in the heat of the moment, it was it was hot, it was scorching hot. I, I choked. I didn't know if it was because of the heat or the pressure, but uh, I just was not happy with my performance. However, after I watched my live stream, I reviewed the footage, and after I spent a little bit of time with this candle, I realized that I agreed with all of the descriptions, all of the notes that I was saying. Uh, I don't think I choked at all. It's just that what I was saying in that moment was so weird, peculiar, and misleading. But I think after taking a moment and stepping back, that's what this candle is all about. It's about stepping outside the box. It's about breaking the rules. It's about being strange and peculiar. And whether you like this candle or not, it's really hard to criticize it because it is called unicorn poop. So let's talk about that, the name. Um, right here on the label, we'll see that this is a candle from Country Candle, which is a secondary line or a subsidiary of Kringle Candle. And on the label here, we see this mythological creature, the unicorn, and he seems to be emitting his own illumination. And in the background, we have this hazy, uh, fantasy-like forest, almost like a black forest. But something that's interesting is all of the colors are subdued. You know, this isn't rainbow, this isn't glitter, this isn't lucky charms. This is like a genuine image uh, of uh, the mythological creature, the unicorn. It's actually quite hard to use the word genuine when it, it is called unicorn poop, but it is a very pretty label, and this was limited. So back in the spring, this started as a social media joke, and within 24 hours, it actually came to fruition. And uh, I put in a pre-order. Hundreds, probably thousands of other people did the same thing. And in late June, everyone received unicorn poop in the mail. Yeah, and uh, it's taken me a little bit, a little bit to to sit down and talk about this candle. We're past Fourth of July now, but I really want to share my thoughts of this candle since I really have put a lot of thought into it. Uh, what does unicorn poop smell like? Well, you would think it would smell a little bit barnyardy, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe it smells like sprinkles. There's only one way to find out. Let's crack this open and see what it smells like. Country Candle Unicorn Poop. Uh, just as shocking as the first time I smelled it, I think it's going to be best if I systematically break this candle down category by category. This way I'm just not throwing out random notes wiggly nilly so let's talk about the fruit let's walk down the spectrum of the fruits starting with citrus big sweet lemon juice or lemonade happening here and also the zestiness big lemon or citron zest and i want to be clear here this is not a clean lemon zest, right? There's no Mr. Clean in here. There's no lemon pledge. Think of this as more of a refreshing lemon juice and zest, okay? All right, so let's move on uh, to stone fruit. Perhaps there's a little bit of peachiness or nectarine here, but undeniably, uh, this is super ripe plum. You know when you bite into a plum, 
and it's not even tart anymore. It's so sweet, and it's all red on the inside. No tartness, just sweet. That's what this smells like, a super ripe red plum. Now, tree fruit, this one is important. Pear skins. And it seems like I've been saying pear skins a lot recently, but I think it's really called for in uh, this situation. Um, I think we all are familiar with the, the fragrant smell of pear skins, Bartlett pears, very fragrant. And arguably, we could say that this is a fruity musk. So I'm saying that this candle is musky. But I'm not saying that this smells like a leathery musk. I'm not saying this smells like a powdery musk. I'm not saying this smells like a floral musk. I'm not saying it smells like a cologne or a perfume. I'm saying it smells like a fruity musk. What does a fruity musk smell like? Well, uh, imagine this. Imagine we're making pear cider. We take full pears, we load them up, and we crush that fruit. We extract all of the juices from those pears. We squeeze the juice out like we're wringing out a sponge. What we're gonna be left with is the skins, the seeds, and the stems. This is called fruit must. And if you've ever been a, a, a part of the process of making wine or ciders before, you will definitely be familiar with this smell. And I think this is a great descriptor to use on this candle. Even if you're not familiar with the smell of fruit must, like crushed pear skins, uh, just imagine a very concentrated form of pear skins right here. Now, tropical fruits, I'm not picking up many or any at all. I mean, we could probably say coconut, lychee, or persimmon, something like that. But if there are tropical notes in here, they're really being buried by the more grandiose notes of this candle. So berries would be the next logical step. And when evaluating wine, um, you usually classify wine by red fruit, blue fruit, and black fruit. But for today, I'm going to throw that all out the window because I'm going to mention a berry that uh, I don't think I've ever used as a descriptor on wine before, but it definitely pulls at the nostalgic heartstrings. It's ringing the nostalgic bell. Uh, are you ready for this? Blue raspberry. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What on earth is a blue raspberry? Well, it turns out it actually is a real fruit. It's, it's, it goes by the name white bark raspberry, but blue raspberry is a real thing. Go figure. However, I think when we talk about the flavorings like snow cones and candies, uh, that berry is not going to be used for those artificial flavorings. I'm talking about like the blue raspberry slush puppies. I'm talking about the blue raspberry Jolly Ranchers. I'm talking about the flavor ice popsicles, right? I'm talking about, uh, you remember Squeeze-Its? Squeeze-Its that came in the little plastic bottles? Uh, or remember the barrel-shaped plastic containers filled with different colored juices that came in like crates or like they came by the case in the grocery store little little jugs of colored liquids they didn't have flavors they just were named by the color well this tastes like the blue the blue juice and i'm not making fun of this at all i'm not making fun of this candle by comparing it to a, a blue raspberry snow cone. I think that is incredibly nostalgic. And conceptually, it makes a lot of sense because we're talking about a fruit that essentially is non-existent. And what do we see on the label? Well, we see that mythological creature, the unicorn. Sorry for any of the unicorn believers out there. I didn't mean to offend anyone. Just trying to make a point here. Uh, but I really do think blue raspberry uh, is at the heart, the core of this candle. So let's dig a little bit deeper and uh, move past the fruit. There are some green notes here, like green tropical leafage, 
or green tropical grass, right? This is something I also feel like I'm bringing up a lot recently, but lemongrass, definitely, and citronella, you got to believe it. You got to believe it. Citronella is in here, which is great because we have that association with citronella and being outdoors in the summertime, uh, burning citronella candles. And when you're dealing with unicorn poop, let's be frank, um, you're probably going to need a citronella candle. So it's following the concept of the candle, which I admire, but also... Uh, we're, we're getting some floral notes too here, uh, a nice delicate lavender, jasmine, and orange blossom. Typically those are like beach flowers, but in this case, it definitely works. It feels like we're with this unicorn and maybe, uh, we're by a creek where these florals may be in bloom. And is anybody familiar with the cologne cool water? Cool water. Don't lie. You know who you are. You know who you are. A little bit of cool water in here. And there is a creaminess. And I could describe this creaminess in probably a lot of different ways. But I'm going to take this approach. You get a big aluminum bowl, right, and a tub of Cool Whip. Take that, to, that Cool Whip, throw that in that aluminum bowl. Now take a can of Barbasol aloe shaving cream. Empty out that can. Empty out that can into that aluminum bowl. Now whip it up and then stick your nose into that bowl. It sounds like I'm being silly and playful, but really, this is what I'm getting. There is that aloe vera, a slight menthol uh, smell, but still very creamy. And then that heavy uh, confectionery sweetness from that Cool Whip. There is a creaminess here, and uh, I'm going with Barbasol and Cool Whip. But now things, we're going to take a turn. Things are going to start getting a little strange from here. I'm detecting some disinfectant. Now that might sound a little odd. That might sound like I'm being insensitive to this fragrance. But really, I, I, I'm picking it up and, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing at all. However, the next thing I'm going to mention uh, the next description is something that I deliberated for a very long time, whether or not I wanted to share it in this evaluation for fear that it would look like I'm making fun of this candle. And I have the deepest respect for Kringle Candle and Country Candle, uh, Mike Kittrich and his team. I've really never had anything bad to say about uh, Kringle Candle. But the number one rule of sensory evaluation is trusting your nose. And if I'm really going to give you an accurate portrayal of what I'm smelling, I got to be true to my nose. We got we to gotta create this smell of vision in some way. And I cannot think of a replacement for this description. Are you ready for it? Don't get insult. Don't be, don't, don't be offended. So when I smell this candle, I'm smelling a very fresh, floral, and slightly medicinal urinal cake. Can we deal with that? I'm not saying this smells like a public restaurant. I'm not saying this smells like a toilet. I'm not saying this smells like a urinal or urine or urea. I'm saying this smells like an unadulterated, you know, puck, a urinal cake. And if you think about it, you know, stepping back, our urinal cake, it smells fresh. It smells clean. It smells a little bit like disinfectant. has a little bit of that medicinal smell. But overall, it's really not a bad smell. And I'm definitely picking it up in this candle. And to be fair, it really, urinal cake is not the first time I've used, um, I've used that as a descriptor on other candles before. So there it is, Country Candles Unicorn Poop. This is a fun hodgepodge of so many different aromas. Uh, I think this will register as nostalgic for most folks. I think children will love this. But ultimately, I think uh, Michael Kittrich and his team had a recipe a concept in their mind, and 
rather than shelve the project or scrap it, throw it in the garbage, um, they gave it a fun label, they gave it a fun name. This way, this fragrance could exist as a relic in their fragrance library. And I have to commend them for that because after all, candles are supposed to be fun and relaxing uh, in the first place. So I have no problem with uh, Kringle putting out something to put a smile on all of our faces, unicorn poop. Now, I usually don't share Candle Company's fragrance notes in my videos, but I've been trying it recently and I've liked the results. So if you don't mind, let me share uh, what Kringle Candle or Country Candle how they describe this candle, at least the fragrance notes. And I really appreciate these notes because most of them are uh, not literal. Uh, I'm always saying to folks, don't take fragrance notes to heart. Don't take them too liter literally because most of the time, there really are just poetic nouns and adjectives to evoke a feeling or an emotion. Um, so with that said, I think Kringle Candle is kind of poking fun at the candle industry a little bit here with these descriptions. Unicorn poop. Bring joy and happiness into your home with this enchanting and mighty fragrance that only a unicorn can bestow. I like that. Fragrance notes of imagination. Sherbert. Sunrays, sweet cream, cake, citrus, moonbeams, sugar, tree fruits, essence of sprinkles, exotic florals and fruits, oxygen, and water flowers. Now, subtracting the ones that are obviously not literal, just thrown in there as a joke. Uh, for the most part, the other ones are true to this candle. There's a lot of things that are not mentioning, in my opinion. Uh, but I think that there are a lot of fragrance notes in there that ring true to this fragrance. So, in closing, were you one of the folks who got their hands on this limited edition unicorn poop candles? Have you burned it? Have you smelled it? What are your thoughts? Break it down for me. Is there anything I didn't say? Anything that you wanna share? Leave your feedback in the comments below. It's really appreciated. Also, um, if you didn't get this candle, would you like to see this re-released? Would you like another opportunity to purchase unicorn poop for your candle collection. Leave that in the comments below because who knows, maybe Mike Kittrich is watching and he might just do it. After creating unicorn poop, uh, I'll believe anything he puts out for sale, uh, but a big kudos for me to Mike Kittrich. Thank you all for watching, sitting down with me as I evaluated this very peculiar candle tonight. If you would like to, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, think about doing that. Thank you once again for joining. I will be seeing you folks soon. But until then, be good, will you?